uh, Michael Malice calls it the original sin. Like, my white privilege is my original sin. Uh, like, I see the woke people falling on their swords of the original sin of, uh, of white fragility all the time. Oh, yeah. Like, like the and, and the thing I hate about white fragility is, is they'll go, well, things are just so good for me. And it's almost like this. It, it's the soft racism of low uh, expectation because it starts becoming this whole thing where I'm like, look, man, I don't really need you to do a lot of shit for me. It's like, but no, your, your life is really bad. It's like, is it? Cause I'm like, I'm just buying groceries, man. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta do all this shit for me. <laughs> like you really don't. And I don't know why a lot of people want to feed into that because it's, I, I believe the, the spirit of our country has changed a little bit. Or not just our country, just Western culture in general has changed. There, there used to be a tenacity. There used to be a ruggedness about it where it's like, you know, I mean, we came up with the the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Because we're like, look, we don't give a shit what you say. It's when you start doing shit that we care about it. Now it's like, no, even if you say it, that's bad. And that's Orwellian. It is. It's Orwellian. It's, it's what... The language police. Oh yeah, like once you once you start ruling over what people can and can't say, and you start making what I thought was worse was the worst was it's like North Korea, right? The big thing about North Korea is you don't really talk about the grand leader, not because he's so great, but because your own homies will turn you in. And what culture has done that to get more status is to turn in somebody and go, look, I found the number one perpetrator of white privilege, the number one perpetrator of misogyny, the number one perpetrator of racism, the number one perpetrator. And you can always make that declaration. All you have to do is just have the longest finger pointed the hardest and then have maybe like one tweet that came like from, at this point in time, it used to be within like five years, but like, yo, it's in any point from birth. now. It can be like, <laughs> like yo, when I when I found out that there was like like who was it, it was Adam Savage, the, the dude off of uh, MythBusters, right? Oh yeah. Like, did you hear about what happened with him? Like, he kind of rape beef with his he got a rape beef with his sister. Like, really? she was like he was seven years old when he did it. So I'm gonna. <laughs> <say> <laughs> <it>. I'm like, <laughs> wow. And like everybody else went like, yo, like, I know that you're taught, like, did he, like, even if he did, do, like, I'm not saying that this didn't happen, but if he did do this, right? And then like, even the family goes like, look, man, this bitch is crazy. She's not, she was like the LaToya Jackson of uh, this whole thing. Like nobody listened to LaToya. Nobody listened to this, whatever the savage was, didn't listen to her. And, and it, it blew up into this whole thing and he almost got canceled and people were like, finally went like, yo man, that don't make no sense. Wait a second. So you're trying to say that like you got molested by him when he was seven. Like you were like, what? And then people were like, well, is that even molesting? And then after a while, like it was big news. And then everybody went like, that's, this is retarded. It dropped. That's what's going to happen one day because yeah. it's unsustainable. It's unsustainable. There's too many people that are losing too many friends there's too many people that are not opening up their mind to the fact that there's a bigger thing going on out here 